Okay, uh, welcome back to part two of the Multimeter I.O. Uh, video series. We're going to look at uh, output. In this video we looked at input in part one. This will be output. So let's add a meter. Uh, that's just a regular container. We can uh, remove it and add, a new, add it again. Undock it. Get it out here. And we can add something in there. Say signal strength again. Okay, so we want to look at output. Um, so we go to the multimeter I.O. Let's delete these from the previous vid. Uh, so we can uh, create something new here. So what we'll do, we'll output some data via TCP IP. So we'll add a new TCP IP server where a client, uh, well, a single client can connect to. And if we start one up, uh, putty, and we'll go to 127.0.0.1, local host, port 9000 to match this over here, raw. So there we are, we've got uh, putty down here. And we want this to be an outbound based uh, connection, an output. So if we type in here, uh, we won't, any, nothing will happen, it will basically ignore anything coming in. Uh, we can still type, but uh, it will literally do nothing. If we were to switch this to an inbound and put it on raw, then we get to see uh, that variable appear. So we're going to be testing outbound in this video, so we'll switch on outbound and we'll say that we want the outbound to be in raw and we'll just leave it like that. We will copy the four character ID. So we'll just press on that, copy to clipboard. We go to the multimeters. And you know, you can go up on here and select that cog and it will take you to the actual one that this relates to. Um, if we scroll down, there's a new node called a data out node. You might have seen it at the bottom in vid one, but uh, yeah. So we'll add that, double click or use this arrow thing to uh, bring it across. Then if we select it, we get this um, in, uh, info at the moment. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll change it to every second, so that's uh, 1000 milliseconds. And I will put control V, the uh, code in there. And as you can see, as soon as I did that, it's now told that this data out node can use that four character ID to send anything that is in this container. So if we come back here and I switch on uh, car uh, carriage return line feed, so everything will be on a new line here, you can see uh, what is being sent. So let's um, just uh, move this to a high signal and you'll see the values are changing here. So we're down to 90 odd there. And if we go up here, 55. So you can see that that data from this uh, signal strength meter is uh, coming out through that TCP IP connection. If you were to add another meter in there, you get the data from that as well. So any meter that is in here will be sent using this node to that four character ID and you can have multiples of those nodes and you can use different character IDs to send to different places. So if we were to add another one, another TCP IP server here, whoops, which has a different uh, port and stuff, so 9001, we'll set that to an output. That's the four character ID that it's used, so we can uh, Telnet uh, connect into that, so was it 9001? So there's that other one down there, and we'll copy this code. We'll go back to here, we'll add another data node, but the data will be going to that other node, and we will tell it that it is. And output 
did we pick a raw on this? I can't remember. Let's try that again. I can't remember. I'd have to have a look for the video. If I did, then it's a bug. <laughs> but we will soon find out. Raw is definitely selected there. Oh, now it's got the stuff now, so yeah, perhaps I forgot to uh, pick raw. As you can see, this light is flashing to, s to show when the data is actually coming out of there, and we can change the format. So that's outputting in JSON. We can pick to XML. So that's now going in an XML format, and that is uh, raw. And you can have things. Uh, so carriage returns, line feeds, carriage returns and line feeds and you can do a custom where if a piece of software is looking for a certain thing like end you can actually put those on there and you can do things like slash r slash n carriage return line feeds and things like that so this this is quite flexible and I'll put an info thing here eventually so you can see uh, what can be done with that so yes that's uh, that's it in a nutshell that is output and of course you can do uh, both directions so we could type into this one as well test colon 100 enter probably will work now I need to tell it that this is an XML uh, input, so there's the in and there's the out. So I need to tell it it's a raw, sorry. Test colon 100, there we go. Test colon 102. And you should see the green light um, flash. So that's input and output working at the same time. So. Uh, switch back to that. Let's um, go back here. And we can get rid of this one. So that will instantly stop sending there and stop sending there. Get rid of these and put in a cross meter needle. Uh, cross needle meter. And if we were to output it to this one, which was the first one. go here, add a data out node on here and then we will see, so we've got reverse power and power coming out of this uh, meter you can do things like cl clock as well which um, it's got uh, UTC time and um, date and all that, local time probably need to format that with uh, without um, semi uh, without colons in there it's f they're getting stripped out because uh, the date is you know the time is like 23 hours whatever so I'll probably put a full stop or something in there um, you cannot actually do the VFO as well so VFO display so that's displaying loads of stuff about the VFO frequency and all that some of the values are nonsensical because we haven't used the uh, like sub A frequency is minus 999 when you're um, not using it stuff like this so you see the, uh, the frequency altering there VFO A frequency. So you can see it moving around. Transmit frequency is changing here as well. If we were to transmit on here, it should hopefully change up to 14. Yeah, there you go. So it's uh, it's quite an interesting system. Outputting all this information, it can you know a piece of software could be written on the at the back end which is putting all this in a database all sorts of uh, all sorts of things you can have it running permanently and logging uh, receive signal strength on a certain band all sorts of things
so uh, there we are, there's output anyway. Um, incidentally with UDP, so uh, let's put a UDP port on there, we haven't got any at the moment, let's just scrap these two. TCP IPs. We'll set this up to receive data from uh, 12001 again, which is where it's coming out of from PST Rotator. Uh, like that. What we can actually do with this UDP in quotes listener is actually create an output. So if we put out, you notice that it grays off the um, the input, so it's now not listening to this. So nothing will change here. But there is, it can be used as an output. So, um, for instance, I will output to UDP data there, and I will leave it in JSON format. So I'm outputting to uh, 10,000. And what I'm going to do, because I haven't got another piece of software to look at it, I'm going to listen to 10,000 with this software. Not that you would do this, but it, was sh it shows that it's working. So I'm going to output to 10,000 UDP, and it's on this code. So we'll copy that. We'll paste it in here. Instantly, that blanked off because it'd be the one that was being referenced got deleted. So if we look at this now, we're now outputting. It's flashing. We're not receiving anymore because we've set it, set it as an out only. If this moves here, then this is not changing. So it's outputting to 10,000, and this is listening on 10,000. And you can see that it is actually hearing itself. And this is all the stuff that's coming through from uh, from that one. So that's that's what's being sent. That stuff that we saw in, in the TCP/IP thing. So you can use the um, you can use the UDP uh, connectors to actually um, send to forward a datagram out to uh, a destination endpoint as well. And you can obviously have it as an in and an out. So now. When I move the rotator, this will update here. So there we are. That just about covers it. Um, <laughs> and of course, um, with these variables, like I mentioned in the input video, you can assign them to specific parts of uh, an actual meter. The only one you can't do at the moment is the multimeter. Um, because there are just too many uh, inputs, there are about seven or eight. If we were to look at the output of that, that meter, so let's scrap these, add a TCP/IP one, set it to out, copy that code, go back to the meter, set the data node to use that code. We'll output it every second. You can see that it's. Uh, well, it will start flashing uh, when it, when it's got a connection now in a second. Zero zero one port nine thousand raw. Let's go. So yes, there's all the it's starting to flash now. See every second. You can change it to raw and put a terminator on it so we can see it. So that is all the data that's coming out of that one multimeter. That that one. Uh, let's get rid of the VFO display and the ADC. So the Anand multimeter is sending all this average signal strength, volts, uh, average signal strength amps, power, SWR, ALC, ALC group. So it's sending all that out. But as I say, at the moment there is no way to assign into it if you want to use that meter for in input data data being sent in. I'll have to think of something there <laughs> to allow that. Okay, anyway, waffling on now. There we are. There's the new features. Input, output, multimeter, um, 
IO. And uh, should be released pretty soon. Uh, Ernst is doing quite a lot of testing. I've done some uh, quite a lot of testing too, but there's a bug there where it's not fading out the light when there's no data coming out of it anymore. <laughs> Things like that will uh, will be resolved. Okay, cheers.